Talks at Fatherland. Hello and welcome back to another riveting episode at Talks at Fatherland. Today we'll be talking about the Battle of Magadishu of 1993. And with me on this topic is Femi Bamidele. We're so happy to have you. It's always a pleasure. And I am your host, Fiona Nana. Now without further ado, let's delve into today's questions. Now, Mr. Femi, yeah. can you provide an overview of the events leading up to the Battle of Mogadishu in 1993? Yeah, the, uh, the Battle of Mogadishu was uh, like one of the plans of the United Nations then. You know, they, they, they wanted to like stabilize the uh, conflicts mm. that was trying to, you know, to, to, to rise up in the in Somali then so they formed uh, an operation uh, tagged um, the Unison 2 then so um, unfortunately the uh, the mission took uh, a tragic turn when they wanted to capture uh, one of the, uh, the Som Somali uh, warlord then so this le uh, this led to the, uh, the, uh, the rise of another battle that they, they, they were not you know expecting to happen so once when this uh, started, it, le it led to various uh, loss of lives and uh, property mm. in Somali then. And this occurred around uh, uh, October 3 to 4 uh, in 1993. Interesting, interesting. So how did um, Mogadishu challenge military tactics and what lessons emerged? Yeah, you know, the battle you know, exposed various things then. It showed that um, there were limitations, mm -hmm. both in the uh, the traditional army of the country and from the uh, international bodies. You know, the the, the use of um, helicopters to bring in troops and you know to extract them back. For, uh, they, they experienced uh, unexpected uh, setbacks, which led to the lives uh, loss of mm -hmm. lives. Then, so this also. Uh, led to uh, some military uh they had to go back you know they had to go back and rethink you know so they reassessed some the, the, ta the tactics they wanted to use to conquer yeah. the uh the conflict then so what some of the um lessons learned then was that um this uh they saw that this war or this let me say the battle was like or was uh too deep for them. They, they did not what they were. They were thinking that they made. So they had to improve the tra the training of their military personnel. Then uh, the the way they help operate. So it's not like they just send Basically, all of them. They just had to go back, to, go the back to the drawing board, board you know, yeah. and blueprints and Blue everything. Print, yeah. Just restricts them. Definitely. So tell us, right? What role did the Black Hawk Down incident play in shaping public perception? and the U.S. government's um, foreign policy. Yeah, the Black Hawk Down uh, was a tragic um, incident then because two uh, U.S. Um, helicopters mm. you know, were shot down oh. by the, uh, you know, the Somali warriors then. So this led to the loss of, uh, loss of U.S. military. And you know how the U.S., you know, any slight attack on their uh, military personnel, personnel yeah. they take it, you know, very personal. Very personal so yeah. yeah, so these uh, this led to the you know they had to find a way of uh, how do I put it now? He, they had to go back to create some policies like sanctions. If you like, once you are uh, attack our military personnel, then we attack without you know we know that with full force probably from the air you know anyhow yeah. they deem fit to make sure the perpetrators are you know are able to uh, they are you know, i mean arrested mm. or put to to book rather brought to book yeah. yeah okay so how did the battle of mogadishu impact international cooperation and um the willingness of nations to engage in humanitarian interventions yeah, you know, the battle it also raised uh, questions because it showed that the military 
might not be able to uh, you know they might not be they might not have the full power mm. to conquer or to put down the fire of yeah. a war so the people started seeing it as uh, they, they are not uh, they are there is too much risk yeah. like they, they can't put their all, all their hopes on the military mm. so these are um, the uh, the reluctance of the nations you know they were now like having second thoughts you know before they send in their troops mm. not even us only other countries that you know for, uh, that send in their troops for peacekeeping they will have to rethink before going there because they don't want to lose their uh, military uh, you know personnel so these are uh, led to the you know uh they 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 then it, it led to how do i put it now uh they had to reshape the approach in which they use so they 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 like know the kind of uh place they are going into then they you know put in the right blueprint where they uh deploy the soldiers to and they, you know they increase their arms mm -hmm. so this all led to um they, they, they were emphasizing on the, uh, the, the type of caution. Like they caution themselves, they, they want to know, they don't just attack anyhow or just deploy their troops. And they want to know how they will be able to capture. They became the, more, strategic more strategic and strategic. tactful Definitely. in their approach. Definitely. Okay, so in what ways did the Battle of Mogadishu influence the development of special operations forces? and their role in modern military strategies yeah you know once they you know they saw that they, uh, they had uh, probably you know uh, like a setback in that area so they had to go back you know now they they know they knew they had reasons for specialized uh and trained forces mm. not just anyhow because you, know, you can't be sending people who are not that experienced yes, to the war to front, the battlefield, to the battlefield, yes. you know, they'll just, uh, it's just like a waste of time, mm, so, waste of, and, and waste of uh, lives like that. So they had to, the experience led to increase in uh, the development and utilization of special forces. Mm. So that was, that was like a key uh, lesson the uh, military, I mean, the UN lent them. So they also made sure that their roles and responsibilities of uh, the military they give them what they need to know about the type of what they are mm. uh, getting into so what would you say as an expert what would you say um is the lesson here or something we can take home with us yeah like i said earlier like once you before you just you know approach a problem you have to know what that problem is and so where, once, it's coming once, from. where it's coming from so once you are aware of everything around it then you prefer the best solution for it so this was what they also did then they went back we assessed themselves then initiated um, real and you know uh, uh specially trained yeah forces, um, forces to tackle the situation then I want to say thank you so much for shedding more light into pleasure. the battle of, of uh, magadishu with this we've come to the end of this episode Please keep working with the Fatherland Foundation by making your donations. Click on the link below or visit fatherlandfoundation.org to make your donations. Till next time, I remain your host, Diona Nana. Bye for now.